Hi, I'm Joe Lindsley, an American, talking to you from Lviv, Ukraine. I've been in Ukraine every single day since Russia's full-scale invasion since February 24th, 2022, and reporting mainly on Chicago's WGN Radio and with our team at UkrainianFreedomNews.com. And as someone that used to work in the world of Fox News, I pay attention to what some of my former colleagues uh, say from afar about Ukraine. And I saw the other day there was a conversation on X between Tucker Carlson and Elon Musk. And Tucker Carlson had interviewed the father of an American named Gonzalo Lira, who's in prison here in Ukraine. Tucker made the accusation that Gonzalo is simply in prison because he's been criticizing President Zelensky. And in return, Elon, and I think Elon was genuinely seeking the truth here, uh, Elon tweeted this uh, on his platform. He said, an American citizen is in prison in Ukraine after we sent over $100 billion. Is there more to this story than simply criticizing Zelensky? If that's all there is, then we have a serious problem here. End quote. And indeed, if that was all there is, then it seems that there would be a serious problem. But, of course, there's more to the story. Uh, first, as I always try to do whenever we hear these figures, $100 billion spent on Ukraine, we have to clarify. This is the problem with the way Washington talks about money, uh, what, no matter what the topic is. It's not actually $100 billion that's been spent on Ukraine. Much of the support is weapons that the United States paid for a long time ago in the 1980s, 1990s, and that w those weapons have a valuation, and that valuation gets factored uh, into these so-called spending packages for Ukraine. It's not new money. It's weapons we won't use in any way. And then in these packages is included or are included funds to buy new weapons for the U.S., probably that we were going to buy anyway without this war, uh, but that all gets all folded into the Ukraine packages, and it makes it look like it's much more money than it really is. Very important to note. Now, to Gonzalo Lira. There's so much information and disinformation swirling around, and of course, and so we have to look at these things carefully piece by piece because a lot is at stake. And it's still quite amazing that while the frontline cities of Ukraine are getting bombed and hit with drones while people who were civilians before this invasion are now fighting and dying and getting wounded as soldiers in the front lines uh, while they push against the invading Russians. Uh, Kiev was hit uh, by ballistic missiles the other day. And instead of focusing on all these things, uh, or say the women who've been raped by Russian soldiers, uh, we're focused on this guy, Gonzalo Lira. But we got to dispel uh, the nonsense. And uh, Gonzalo Lira had been in Ukraine before the full-scale invasion. He was living in the city of Kharkiv. Uh, just about 30 miles from Russia, a city that I go to very often. And from the full beginning of the full-scale invasion, the Russians began to bomb the hell out of that city every day and night, and Gonzalo was there. And it's, it was pretty scary to be there. But while he was there, he was making video reports, sharing it with the world, uh, attacking Ukraine, and not just criticizing Zelensky. Plenty of people in Ukraine criticize President Zelensky. Uh, it's, it's a free country and a democracy. There's tons of criticism of politicians. But, but Gonzalo Lira was accusing Ukraine of attacking Kharkiv, uh, which is preposterous. And, 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 and he, he was showing uh, images of Ukrainians uh, who had been uh, killed and, and horrible, awful, awful images uh, and sort of gloating in this and defending Russia, defending Russia's actions in this time of war. And despite that, he did this for a year without being stopped. He was free to do so. People didn't like him. They hated him. Uh, but no one arrested him. So for the entire first year of this full-scale invasion, uh, Gonzalo Lira sat there in his apartment in Kharkiv, and he trashed Ukraine. Not Zelensky, he trashed Ukraine and the Ukrainian people who were fighting for their country. And it, they put up with it. Uh, but then finally, when the authorities said they had enough evidence, that, and this is, they, they, they charged him that he was not, not, not for his free speech, but that he was revealing positions for the Russians to hit in Kharkiv. This is a very real problem. Uh, we've seen this happen very often. The Russians have spotters to make sure their missile attacks are accurate, and if they're not, they need to fine-tune them. And they had evidence that Gonzalo was doing this. And it's not a surprise, if you listen to what he said, he really does like Putin and does support what Putin's doing. Uh, and so after a year, finally, the Ukrainians moved to arrest him, and Gonzalo was taunting the officials uh, he was still a free man, and he was tweeting, or some, I, think, I think it was on Twitter, that he was uh, fleeing to the Hungarian border to leave Ukraine. He advertised this, and it was almost like he was begging to be arrested, to become a martyr. Uh, and exactly that's how he's been used 
uh, by people like Tucker. Uh, so yes, there's much more to this story. He was not arrested for criticizing President Zelensky. Uh, he did that and much more and much worse for a whole year without being arrested. Uh, he was arrested for on the charges of uh, revealing uh, sensitive positions in Ukraine, helping guide Russian missiles uh, to their targets uh, to destroy Ukrainians. And that's why they finally locked him up. And everyone here is pretty happy with that now. So it's war time. And if you were in Israel or somewhere else, what would you do? Or in America. And while we talk about Gonzalo, you know, let's also, I mean, we should also talk about, for example, the Wall Street Journal reporter, uh, Evan Gerskovitz, who is in prison in Russia. Uh, why, not, why not talk about him? Or all of the Russians who are in jail for not a lot, but those who do dare to speak out against the regime. There's no freedom of press, no freedom in Russia. There's freedom in Ukraine, even in the time of war. Uh, and that has to be acknowledged. It's the truth. So this has been Joe Lindsley talking to you from Lviv uh, with our team at UkrainianFreedomNews.com. Uh, thank you from Ukraine. Joe, Joe, little fucker, Joe Lindsley. Joe Lindsley is quickly becoming an American treasure in broadcasting. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. <laughs> Начитай сторони. Come on now. Oh, it's sad. Are you on? Начитай сторони.